Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Construction Project Management Tips. Today we're going to be looking at a process called brainstorming to solve problems. Brainstorming is a tool that's been used in lots of different places. Uh, it's a popular tool used in lean construction methodology. Uh, where we try to take a problem, and usually it's a problem that's kind of a large problem that you want to have some discussion points around. And so there are different ways that you can brainstorm. There's been a lot of research that's been done on brainstorming, and some techniques don't work as well as other techniques. So maybe we'll just have a little bit of a discussion on that, and I'll show you one of the techniques that I found to be quite beneficial and useful. So let's take a look. All right, so we use brainstorming to solve problems, as I said, that are fairly large that we want to try to uh, better. An example might be in construction, our change order processes, or our ability to negotiate claims into successful changes. These could be some examples of something that maybe you want to brainstorm because Maybe your company's not been as good at it as they could be. And so you're looking for ways that you can make improvements. This is all part of the continuous improvement process. Ties into other tools that we've talked about too in uh, this series and other series that I've been conducting where you use other tools like the Pareto Principle or Pareto's Law 2080 rule. You identify 20% of the issues, problems that you're having that will likely give you a big return on that investment if you're successful at it. So maybe a four times return on that 2080. Um, so one of the things though with brainstorming, we wanna make sure that we are collaborating. So that's the idea. You have a bunch of people together and you collaborate and you innovate. Uh, you come up with something that maybe you wouldn't have just come up with on your own especially if there's a certain process in place that brings that kind of um, idea making out in the open. And we wanna make sure if we're gonna do that, that we get engagement of everybody. So I've talked about in previous videos, uh, the eight areas of waste in lean construction or construction in general, if we wanna think about it that way. Uh, and one of them is non-utilized talent. And non-utilized talent means people that may have some pretty good ideas that either you shut them down or they didn't have the opportunity or they feel that their ideas wouldn't be validated. You wanna make sure during a brainstorming process that you set it up in such a way that everybody feels comfortable engaging in the process. And you take into consideration that some people are introverted, some people are extroverted, you try to come up with a way that is going to get the best out of people. Now there's different methods that are, have been used in brainstorming. One is what we call unstructured method. It allows anybody to contribute any idea at any time. So in other words, you're just throwing out ideas, just keep throwing out the ideas. Um, one of the problems with that method is that the people that are kind of extroverted, they keep throwing out ideas and ideas and then some people withdraw back because that person's kind of dominating uh, the discussion and that happens very frequently. I see it a lot, you know, being a professor of construction management, I see it a lot in classes where I maybe have a student that as soon as you ask a question, you know, they're either out with the answer or the hands up and um, they're really trying to um, vocalize themselves, which is great for them, but you also want to try to engage others in that discussion so that they don't withdraw and then you know they're not really participating anymore so that would be a problem that i, I found with unstructured on the unstructured methodology now a structured method it controls the input by giving everyone an equal chance to contribute so usually with that method you go around the room or you go around the table or around the group and one after the other. And so, you know, you, you can say, um, Sarah, what's yours? And then you can say, uh, Jesse, what's yours? Uh, what's, you know, and you keep going person after person and everybody knows that they're gonna come around the table. So they're really kind of thinking about what are they gonna say next? 
And, you know, you have the ability to say at a certain point, pass, I don't have any more ideas or the idea I just was about to say was just mentioned. Um, but it does give everybody that opportunity to participate. And there's a little bit of peer pressure in that because, you know, you know it's coming up to your turn and you got to have something that you want to um, contribute. One of the ways, though, to make sure that people have things that they can contribute is to make sure that they come prepared. So another best practice, and there's a few best practices here on brainstorming, is you have identified the problem and let everybody know that you're going to have this brainstorming, brainstorming session ahead of time and what the problem is and to come with some ideas so they can prepare themselves. They can start stewing uh, under the surface over time and that can be helpful as people prepare for it. Um, so have people come prepared to the session. Now the other thing is you've got to be careful of the leader influencing the group. So if the leader, say it's the the owner of the company, your boss, whoever that may be in a group setting, they kind of say their influence early on or their ideas early on, people may withdraw a little bit or look for other one, solutions that are surrounding that leader's solution or that are complementary to that leader's solution, which is fine except that you may be missing the whole best idea in another section. That's the whole non-utilized talent. You know, if you're influencing the group to sort of uh, do group speak and to follow along with the leader, that can be problematic. So you gotta be very careful that the leader does not influence the group. And very often you might not wanna have the leader uh, put in their points, at least not in the beginning, because that would sort of set the tone. Uh, so as we said, have people come prepared, record all the ideas. So have someone, in. You can, the nice thing about this, I've done it a lot of times now virtually. You can do it really well virtually. And sometimes that means you can have people that normally wouldn't travel to wherever it is to participate. You can, But you can still get them to do it. You could use some programs like uh, Miro where you've got a virtual whiteboard and you've got everybody participating uh, collaboratively. Just recently I did uh, a session. It wasn't my session, but it was done to um, develop a curriculum and it was done really well using Miro and everybody sort of collaborating with ideas. So you want to have those ideas all recorded uh, because what you're trying to make sure of is that it is the quantity of ideas at this stage, not the quality. You just want to get these ideas out. You just want to get them out and at that point too, no negativity so no oh my god here they go again the rolling of the eyes that sort of thing or uh, making a sort of uh, smart aleck uh, remark or something of that nature that's going to shut some people down and that's not what you want that will be an unsuccessful brainstorming session so you've got to give a little bit of upfront training to people so that they understand that that will definitely be counterproductive so no negativity during the process now, the team leader can definitely summarize the points that have been written down. They may be the one that has been writing it down. And once the decision is made, everyone works in the same direction. So that's the idea is now you summarize it and then you can work at getting a decision. But we'll get to that in a minute because we've got to kind of figure out we've got a lot of points. Well, what's a decision? How are we ever, you know, that's a great idea. You've got 30 points. How do we decide which one is viable or which ones are viable, All right? So we're identifying as many possible causes uh, as we can. And uh, uh, we want to basically have some hints. Uh, you know, some of these provide hints that can be helpful uh, to flush out these ideas a little bit better. Sometimes in their infancy, they're not all that good, but they can provide hints to where we should take things if we have a discussion about them, right? So sometimes there's a little jewel rolled up in a point or a point can give, lead to another idea that actually um, really is, is useful at solving the problems. It's like with uh, innovation. Uh, sometimes we have innovations and people innovate a product and they have an idea about it, but the original product is, eh, it's a 
that's okay. But then people, that gives people other ideas about how they could use that technology. And then all of a sudden it's this great thing. Um, so that you keep that in mind. As I mentioned, ideas are recorded. It's quantity we're looking for. No discussion or judgment, no rolling in the eyes. And we're not opposing anything outright. So again, how do we do that? How do we, how do we make that happen? Well, I like matrixes. Uh, you've probably seen me use the Eisenhower matrix, you know, for time management in the past. And so what we can do is we can set up a matrix that looks something like this. Um, low improvement, high improvement, easy and cheap, cheap, uh, difficult and expensive. So you've got basically four quadrants. And if when you are recording the ideas, you can number them then. So if you've got a list of bullet points, you could you could initially have number one, idea number one, idea number two, idea number three, and so forth. And so they're all numbered. And then what you can do is you can look at placing the numbers in the correct column or what the group kind of feels like where it should go. And you can have a, a discussion about them. So I uh, did this with a group on change order, uh, basically improving the change order processes. And we had a brainstorming session. So, and again, the other side of the thing that you can think about is group size. If there is a large group, you may want to break that larger group into smaller groups. This is where doing online works really good. You can have a breakout room, three or four breakout rooms, discuss it, and then have everybody come back, have the list, and then you can put them in the correct quadrants as a group. Or even within the groups, they can put it in the quadrants, and then you can vet that when it comes back to the main group. So these were like 15 or 16 ideas that, that the group had sort of um, spilled out during their brainstorming session. Again, if you have people come prepared, that is going to be pretty easy to come up with a long list of potential items. And so then you can look at placing them. Now this group I think was a little bit easy in the sense that they didn't, maybe they didn't want to hurt each other's feelings. So that's the other thing you got to be careful about. Uh, that you know everything can't be easy and cheap or everything can't be difficult and expensive. These kind of things occurring. But they did do a reasonably good job of getting uh, the particular points. So like number one up here is uh, easy and cheap. But I also asked them to kind of put them, you know, if it's a little bit more on the expensive side than this one, then this is less. So this is basically easier and cheaper as if you're to the left or the top corner. As you go down, the amount of improvement goes down too. So you can kind of place the numbers hovering around where it makes sense in the matrix. Because then when you're done, you can't do all of these and there's a lot you don't want to do. And then you can start taking ones away. You can sort of say, okay, well, we're not going to do number three. It doesn't, uh, doesn't give us the full reward. It's a low improvement for it. It is easy and cheap, but very, unless it's totally easy, that there's nothing to do with it. Probably don't want to do that one. But ones up here that are easy and cheap and high improvement, we would definitely want to look more closely at, right? There might be something over here that's worthwhile. Just because it's difficult and expensive doesn't mean that it's not uh, worthwhile when it's high improvement. So we could have those discussions. We've got them roughly placed. And then we can look at, all right, so which ones are we going to implement first? And it might be one, it might be three or four, depending on the amount of work that's involved in each one. But this can give us sort of a, a nice framework for structuring this and setting this up so we know exactly what we need to do. And that's really handy in solving kind of problems that construction businesses have. Again, I'm not saying you do this for every little thing. You know, I've talked about the five whys and different root cause analysis tools uh, that you can utilize to get to the root cause and you can very often in a group figure things out but there's elements of this where it's worth taking that bit of time to kind of vet it give it a process so that you can come up with a pretty good idea of where you should attack things first you're looking for the 20 percent of items that's going to give you the 80% of results that you're after, if we're to use the uh, 
Pareto principle and helping us that way. You're not looking for something that's going to take, you know, uh, 10 hours to do that's going to save one hour of time. That doesn't make sense. But something that we're going to do that's going to take one day to implement that's going to save us four or five days or more, that you want to look. You want to look for that uh, multiple return factor. And that really gets at um, the root of what we're trying to do with brainstorming. It's another nice tool that really helps in making those kind of improvements in your business, in your projects. So again, be selective on what it is that you're trying to brainstorm. Get the right people together, have them prepared, and make sure that everybody is able to participate. So go round, let the group go round and round so that basically uh, we don't have quiet introverts that really are the smartest people in the room, uh, letting that uh, talent go to waste. Uh, so we really want to do that. Have a matrix that helps to ensure that then we can determine what particular points we're going to address first that will give us the highest return for that effort. So there you go. That's a nice method. Now, if you enjoyed this video, um, please uh, click the subscribe button and click the notifications button. I have a, quite a number of videos in uh, project management tips for construction. Microsoft Project, Site Management, Construction Business Management, and so forth. And if you've done any brainstorming yourself, had good experiences or some difficult experiences, let us know in the comments. And let's build this community together. So I'm Tom Stevenson, Professor of Construction Management, wishing you a wonderful day, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.